Hello everybody, hope that you're all feeling fine, fancy and good and I hope that this life has been treating you okay this week. Welcome back to your little bite-sized slice of true crime. My name is Yinka Bikini and I'm here to give you as much as possible in just 10 minutes about a particular case. And today we are traveling to 2010 Cumbria, which is a county in the northwest of England. So like, up there. The morning of June 2nd started out like any other early summer day, but it was gonna be one that changed everything and that the community would never forget. A murder spree was about to begin. It would last two hours and by lunchtime, 13 people would be dead. Welcome to the anniversary. Now the reasons why 52 year old Derek Bird went on a rampage, the likes of which are rarely seen here in the UK, are actually unknown. What, well, like we do know, it's money. He didn't leave a note or anything, but it's, it's money. Money that drove a father of two and a recent grandfather to start a killing spree. Money that motivated him to kill his twin brother first. The family had been in dispute about their late father's will and in the early hours of June 2nd, Derek Bird jumped into his silver Citron Picasso and drove to his twin brother's house. He killed him by shooting him 11 times in the head and the body using a 22 caliber rifle. He then got back into the old Picasso and he drove to the home of the family solicitor, Kevin Commons, who was 60 years old. When he knocked on the door and Kevin opened it and he saw the gun, he of course ran for the hills and Derek fired two shots from a double barreled shotgun, hitting Kevin once in the shoulder. Kevin, still trying to get away, stumbled back towards the family bar on, but Derek was onto him and he killed him with two rifle shots to the head. And it's because of these first murders that everyone believes that it's over that family will, considering that this is how it started. Police investigating the killings later also found that Derek was the subject of an ongoing tax investigation. So after killing Kevin, Derek got back in his car and he drove off somewhere. The police were called, a neighbor of Kevin's, called the Cumbria Constabulary at 20 past 10 in the morning. She actually didn't make the phone call right away after witnessing the shooting because she was panicking in. she was flandangering all over the place she called her other neighbor she wasn't sure what to do then when she did call them she described the gun as an air rifle which is not correct an air rifle is not a shotgun it literally just shoots air so it's not the same and maybe the police didn't take it as seriously as they should because of this information uh, but yeah Derek is on the move he drove to his friend's house to get a gun that he had loaned them because he's a gun driller um, but his mate wasn't in the wife answered the door she didn't have access to said pistol and we know that he was there at just half past 10 in the morning. Upon leaving there he was a taxi driver and he drove to a taxi rank in Whitehaven and there he killed Darren Rowcastle. They had had run-ins in the past though. He's been described as his friend but apparently Darren would poach fares from him and he even vandalised his taxi once so I'm not sure if they were besties. No prizes though for guessing what happens next. He beckoned Darren over and shot him with the same gun that he used to kill his brother and his lawyer. He shot him in the face, in the chest and in the abdomen. He rolled up on another taxi driver called Donald Reed. He shot him in the back, uh, didn't kill him, but obviously he was trying. He then rolled up on another taxi driver called Paul Wilson, who he shot in the face with his shotgun. And word finally began to spread about this shooting. And that's when some unarmed officers started following him while he was driving. Driving. Now in the UK, police traditionally, the regular policemen, most police people, don't carry guns. So they're just there with their hats and their batons driving off this armed man. And Derek shot into a taxi cab, injuring the driver and the passenger. He then shot at the two policemen who were in the car following him because he clocked them and he made his escape. And I mean, unless they were planning to like halt him to death, uh, there isn't much they could have done 
rather than just get out of his way, otherwise they definitely would have been on the victim list in this case. And this, as it stands, is already a crazy crime. The victim count is already high. But what happens next takes this case up so many levels. As I told you, De Derek was a taxi driver, and him and his brother seemed to be having financial arguments, and the solicitor was due to meet with Derek a few days after that he was killed. So these murders, the police have determined, were targeted shootings. However, the net widened and Derek got random and just started driving up and down Cumbria shooting people. Police began urging people in the local areas of Whitehaven, Ergamon and Seascale to stay inside their homes because there was an active shooter at large. And uh, crucially, police are asking members of the public in Whitehaven and Egremont to stay indoors until further notice. He shot a woman called Jacqueline who was just walking her dog. He killed a woman called Susan who was just walking home with her shopping bags. When he shot her, she fell. He attacked her physically uh, before shooting her in the head. He shot a man called Kenneth who was just walking in the head. Leslie Hunter was beckoned over to his car and he shot them in the face and back. Miraculously, actually, Leslie survived. He travelled to the village of Thornhill and beckoned over a teenager called Ashley. Now he shot her, but he missed. Shot it, and then like I went to, when I was running off, he shot it again. He then decided to go and visit his mate Jason. He lived in a village called Wilton. His wife answered the door. Jason wasn't in. She didn't know about the shooting spree, and Derek just continued with his day. He carried on with his spree after saying hi and he shot Jennifer Jackson once in the chest of his shotgun and twice in the head of his rifle, killing her. He drove off, but then he turned around and then he came back and killed her husband, James, shooting him in the head. He shot a woman called Christine Hunter Hall, who was wounded. He killed Isaac Dixon, who was chatting to a farmer in a field. He was fatally shot twice at close range with a shotgun. A former semi-professional rugby player called Gary Purdom was shot and killed while he was working in a field outside a hotel at Bronwood near Gosforth. Bloody hell, it's so crazy to me. It feels like this guy just had free range and he was just popping off anybody. Where were the police? <sighs> The madness continued anyway. He drove towards Seascape along the way. He was going really, really slow. And he was waving at drivers to pass by him. And then he was just shooting them. And he shot and killed James Clark. He shot an injured Harry Berger. And armed response vehicles were attempting to follow him. They were attempting, but they were blocked by Harry's car because Harry had moved and, and then let Derek go. And then he was blocking the way. You can't make this up. He had seemingly had no plans of slowing down or stopping this horrific rampage. He shot and killed a man called Michael Pike who was cycling in front of the car. He killed a woman called Jane Robinson in what was his signature move, beckoning her over and then shooting her point blank in the face. Police spotted him driving past them at 11.33 a.m. They tried to pursue him but they got delayed by roadworks and then they lost him. And a case like this is so hard to cover because there are so many victims and I don't want it to sound like I'm just reeling off a laundry list, like a register or a roll call of victims. It's just that he killed so many, 12 people and he injured 11 in just two hours on a random June morning. I've added loads of information about everyone, about the timeline. I've got a little map as well in the description box. Please look, it's a lot. It's a lot of information to stick in these 10 minutes. He would go on to wound two more, Jackie Lewis and Fiona Moretta, and when he arrived in the village of Boot, he fired his rifle at nearby people, but he missed. He continued further into the village, he continued firing at random, and he was missing, and eventually he did hit and severely wounded Nathan Jones in the face. He pulled up on a nearby tourist called Samantha Christie. He asked her if she's having a nice day before he shot her in the face. And shortly after firing at two cyclists, he crashed into several vehicles and into a stone wall, damaging the tyre. Now, he continued on briefly, but, you know, he was running out of ammunition. He had shot so many rounds. And now he's got a flat tyre as well. A nearby family of four who were unaware of the shootings, they offered him assistance, uh, but they were turned down quickly and advised 
to leave. So he abandoned his car at a beauty spot near Boot named Dr. Bridge. Shortly after, police confirmed that there had been fatalities, they were searching for a suspect. I kind of remember this actually because I feel like they cancelled Coronation Street and Lady Gaga got loads of stick um, because she performed in England and there was something about her concert that was deemed really insensitive. I think she had like a murder scene in it or something and I remember there being news bulletins, active shooter, active shooter and it all being a bit mad because obviously the gun laws in the UK are pretty stringent. Police anyway were looking for him, for his gun, for his car. By this time they knew they were looking for Derek Bird and at two o'clock that afternoon Deputy Chief Constable Stuart Hyde announced that Derek Bird's body had been found in a wooded area along with a rifle. He had killed himself. These were considered the worst mass casualty shooting incident in the UK since the 1996 Dunblane School massacre, which had left 18 people dead. It was later determined that Derek Bird fired at least 47 rounds during the shootings, 29 from his shotgun and 18 from his 22 caliber rifle. A search of his house later on showed that he had 750 rounds of the 22 caliber ammunition and 240 rounds of the shotgun shells and a large amount of financial paper work. I know you've heard me ask here today where the fudge to calls with the police. Well, RAF helicopters were drafted in to help with the massive land and air search. Um, a police officer later told the inquest that communications with police and other officers was difficult because the airwaves kept jamming. He had been a licensed firearms holder and the incident sparked debate about further gun controls in the UK. And there we have it, the horrific and insane case of Derek Bird and the Cumbria shootings, also known as the Cumbria Massacre, still to this day one of the deadliest smash shootings that have taken place in the UK. And you know, when I read, listen, watch, talk about cases like this, I'm always flabbergasted and flandangled about how someone can do it. But money, 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 money is the cause of so much wicked in this world. So much. Money, sex, and there's something else. Maybe it's just money and sex, I'm not sure. But boy, thank you so much for watching. I've stuck a bunch of information in the description box for you, so please have a look at that if I've tantalised you into researching more into this case. Um, yeah, and of course we're still on the road to 5K. We're almost there, which is mad, but keep subscribing. If you like what I do, drop a comment, give me a little like. I got my first YouTube troll the other day, which was fun. But yeah, thank you for watching. I will see you next week for another episode. Have a good week. Have a good week. See you later.